Okay guys, welcome back. Uh, so in my last video, I showed you how to install the software and get it looking at like this. Okay, I did it really quickly because there's lots of videos out there that cover most of it. I had a few issues, so I just I just covered off, off the issues that I had. But in the end, if you watch that video, you should be able to get to this stage where you've got the, uh, where you've got SDR Sharp installed with the latest drivers. I'm using the V4 version of uh, of the RTL SDRs you'll see in the previous video and you'll have installed the RT433 and it will be working but the thing is we've got a little bit of work to do when you do this it will actually it will actually start recording and it will start decoding some signals and some of it just just works it's just great but you know what one of my temperature modules that I have uh, in, in my workshop it, it was just very very intermittent it would just uh, like once every half an hour it, 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 it to just it to just come up, up with the signal and i know it's transmitted every 30 seconds and the module on on on, on the bench it's, it's it's working you know the, the display so i knew it was it's got to be something to do with this software and it's taken me days and i've worked it out what i needed to actually start up is this baseband noise blanker which is here and the first thing I did is I, as I set this, I found that these yeah, you've, you've got to play about with them, but I found actually it's probably better to have them have them quite low. It seems to work better. And then depending on how far you are away from the module, I have to up up, up and, and go up and down on this gain. What I have got is I've got a little bit of a graphic here, here, here to show, show you guys. I made a, made a few notes. So here we go, and you know these 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 coloured channels refer to the what what's inside the colored squares you know so it goes to show that we we, we need we need this baseband noise blanker on uh, in these this purple one set set the width and i just found that these work better you might find something different I'd be interested to let let me know put put any any comments down what you know if you find something better than what i'm doing here that that'd be great i found on the yellow box i had to adjust it depending on how far away the box was this this source here guys and of course you get to that in here by ensuring you go up to the source and, it, and it's here and then you can click on this config box here and this little gear wheel and this and this will come up here and these are my settings so far now i'm just playing around with this on or off doesn't really seem to be making any difference but what I am I'm finding, if I turn that off and have the gain right up here, then I get no, I, I get no decoding happening in this window. So while I get all the signals coming in, uh, and and it decodes correctly in, in in the in in the in the decode messages, you know the temperatures and, and everything comes up correctly. I don't get I don't get to see this this uh, verbatim sort of output. So I'm just messing with that now. But if I if I leave it like this, you've got to remember to turn the gain up because I've got this 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 tuner uh, AGC automatic gain control turned off. So I've got to do this manually. And it'll start off at zero, so you've got to whack it up, otherwise you'll get nothing at all, guys. Uh, I found that it's best to start off high and actually start to work lower because uh, it can be too high. And and there's usually a, with all these settings, there's usually a, 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 a very fine. Uh, pinpoint to get to, to get it to get what, what you're looking looking for to work so let's let's just have a play about with that so if, if i run this now i'm going to press play that's off off the reader i've got my plugin enabled and i'm going to click start i've got this I've, i'm going to put it actually on here sorry i'm going to go uh duh, 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 i'm going to go up to here because this is this is this is the exact tuning frequency for my my hard to hard to read monitor you don't need this guys this radio so i'm going to clear that off to give me a little bit more space it doesn't matter what i do in here it does nothing when i'm when i'm using this plugin so i'm going to get rid of that that tab there i've got everything i need now here on on here i've got my frequency manager so i can save frequencies i've got my noise blanker i've got my i've got my source and i've got my plugin for the 433 uh, megahertz decoder I've got this, this uh, like this. Look, I've got uh, verbatim output. 
M level, I'm not really quite sure what that is. I'm not doing any saving. CSI seems to be the best selection. And this shows me the shows me the parameters it's using. And I, as far as I can see, you can't change that. So the only thing left to do now is click the start button and then to start decoding. And then it's, it's instantly got a reading off my very hard to read read uh, monitor. If I if I turn this off like this, I will still get readings from from, from different things. But I won't get this one for one protocol. And if I get this, if I get this setting re really good, then I can. It, what this, what this temperature monitor actually does, it it pulses ten times as the same data ten times back to back. And if I get if I get the settings really good, then what what, what I find is depending on where where the module is, and now it's just outside outside the window. Then it will actually pulse, and I'll capture all ten. Uh, inputs all, all all in one go that's my other nexus t t temperature sender and that's the one for the display in the house so see that, that's that, that's only got one and it's, and it's every 30 seconds so what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and actually drop this a little a little lower let's take it down to take it down to six and, and, and see what happens I'm not going to play about with this for very long, guys, because obviously this the signal only comes in every every 30 seconds. In the next video, I'll show you how to record this signal so you can keep playing it over and over again. Uh, but but then what that doesn't do is it doesn't doesn't help you. It's good for decoding, but it doesn't help you find the best signals. There you go. Look 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 look, look, look how many came in there. Look now now I've lowered that gain. We got back to back. We got one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got eight signals there, back, back to back. I'm going to close that again so on the next pulse it gets. And that was just by lowering this gain. And I know that if I get that perfectly, I'll get 10 signals back to back. And that means I've got a perfect, a perfect uh, sound to noise ratio. There you go. I got, I got seven signals again. Let's turn that down uh, one more. Let's, let's see what happens. But. If you're going to record, you want the best because you're going to you're going to record. You're not you're not going to record the best signal. You're going to record the the signal you've got now, if that makes sense. So if you're going to if you're going to go up, move on to sort of decoding signals, what you need to do is you need to make sure that you've got the best recording that you're going to get. There you go. We, we, we're getting eight. I'm going to leave it at that because I don't I don't want to go much further. And notice that we are at the moment decoding those signals here on this on, on 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 this output if you don't get your information right what tends to happen is this just goes down with blank lines it this this cursor just moves down it doesn't actually print anything on the screen and then you've got to play about with with with, with your gains and stuff until you get the perfect match and the other thing i'm going to do i'm going to just stop this and i'm going to put the graph because this 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 graph is really useful and start up I just want to show you this one before we before we we stop the video. So let's wait for something to come in. Let's close these windows so we know something's happened. As always, I'm waiting for the next thirty seconds to come come across. We're on. Everything's working. Just no signals coming in at the moment. There you go. So it is is my hard to reach protocol one one four one. My other Nexus temperature sensor. So this is your digital pulse coming in. So I think that's I think that's enough to get get you going, guys. Hopefully that was useful. Put me put anything down in the comments, especially if you know how to limit this area, because what what I find is is if I'm working on this particular one, I don't really want to be picking up the one that's right next to it. I just want to receive a very fine tuned frequency, and I can't work out how to do that. I really can't. It just seems to record everything and just, you know, if, if there's something close to it it, 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 it comes up with that. So if you know anything, please put some comments down. If you want to see more like this, please like and subscribe, obviously. Uh, you know, all YouTubers say that, like and subscribe. But leave leave me a comment to tell me what you like to see, if that makes sense. I can see with view, viewing figures, I know the Campbell stuff, come, it, it does really well and certainly using the oscilloscope does really well. 
But if this, if you found this useful, then please just drop me a comment. Just, just so I know you found it useful. That, that, that'd be, that'd be great. Thanks so much, guys. Take care. Have a good day.